Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. So far, I have introduced the seven masters of uh, different styles in the series, learning and uh, evolving from uh, past practitioners, including four Xingyi masters. However, I have not yet introduced the founder of this style. Today, we will look at the life and the contributions of uh, Li Luoneng, the founder of uh, Xingyi. But first, let's warm up with Dao De Jin commentary and Xiu Dao. Today's Dao De Jin sentence is Er Gui Shi Mu from the 20th chapter. In chapter 19, briefly discussed last week, Lao Zi introduced the three ideal attitudes toward dealing with social phenomena. In chapter 20, Lao Zi introduced his dialectic approach toward analyzing different social issues. For example, he said, quote, 五为之与阿相去几何? 五为之与阿相去若何? End quote. Translation what is the difference between saying yes because you agree and saying yes because you want to please? What is the difference between good and evil? End translation. In other words, Lao Zi tried to explain his belief. Renounce knowledge and your problem will end by asking, what is the difference between yes and no? What is the difference between good and evil? Then, he also introduced the different type of opposite attitudes and conducts based on different understandings of the Tao of humans. He indirectly provided his answers to the suitable behaviors of a sage. For example, he said, quote, 众人皆有矣,而我读完且比, end quote. Translation, the multitude of men all possess usefulness. I am alone a war awkward and rustic, end translation. In other words, Lao Zi hinted at the right way as being unsophisticated and simple in dealing with others which is another way to express the concept of a non-action or wu wei. At the end of this chapter, Lao Zi said, quote, 我独异于人而贵十母, end quote. Translation, I'm not like other people, I'm getting right with Tao, end translation. So the term gui shi mu is the last three words of this chapter. Here, Gui means respect, appreciate, and follow. Shi means nourish. Mu means mother, but in Taoist context, it means the Tao, since Tao is the mother of everything in the universe. Put together, Gui Shi Mu means one is nourished by the Tao even though literally it means seeking substance from the mother. In Xiu Dao practice, Gui Shi Mu is the popular term describing the right method for refining energy. In classic Xiu Dao documents, ancient scholars used the term Zi or Sang and Mu or mother to indicate two types of energy, postnatal energy and prenatal energy. Zi or Sang is the postnatal energy, while Mu or Mother is the prenatal energy. Xiu Dao practice aims to convert postnatal energy into prenatal energy through energy refinement practice. In Taoist words, the process to let the son return to the mother. So, how should you actually do it? Changing the external approach in our daily life and adopting an internal approach to managing our 
mind, energy, spirit, and so on is the Taoist way to nourish the prenatal energy. In practice, focusing on the Dan Tian is the starting point, which is described as Gui Shi Mu, the key term that originated in this chapter. To summarize, Taoist practice adapts the term Gui Shi Mu to express the importance of prenatal energy and expects to nourish it by converting the postnatal to the prenatal in practice. With that, let's move on to today's main topic, the life and the contribution of Li Luoneng, the founder of Xing Yi. Topics covered in today's video include First, who was Li Luoneng? Second, Brief history of Xing Yi creation and development. Third, Li Luoneng's contribution. Fourth, misperception of Li Luoneng and Xing Yi. Fifth, takeaways and inspirations. Before we proceed, I'd like to mention that in this video, I will focus on both historical and technical aspects of Li Luoneng and Xing Yi, the style he created. However, due to a lack of unanimous agreement on some historical events, I will list all of the popular answers. The reason for this phenomenon is that in the older days in China, there was no systematic and scientific approach to maintaining historical records. In addition, it will also provide my research result on those events. So, Without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1. Who was Li Luoneng? Li Luoneng, a famous name in the martial art community, was the founder of Xing Yi. Li Luoneng, whose original name was Li Feiyu, he styled himself Neng Ran, which was the popular way of naming oneself in ancient times. Since his self styled name Neng Ran had the sound Neng, which was pronounced Nong in some northern areas of China, many people also pronounced his name as Lao Nong, which literally translates to Old Farmer. Actually, he was a garment merchant and not a farmer. He did supply vegetables when he was in Shanxi, but that didn't make him a farmer. So, many people believe that he was a farmer was only due to his name. That belief was not based in reality. He belonged to a rich family and one of his ancestors was an official in the Qing military. <coughs> With time, People ended up using Luo Neng as his given name. Even today, most people just call him Li Luo Neng. Again, a name is just a symbol in Chinese history. You can call him Li Feiyu, Li Neng Ran, and the people will understand that you are referring to Li Luo Neng, the Xing Yi founder. With regard to the dates of his birth and death, there are different accounts. The most popular version goes that he was born on 28th of February 1795 and passed away on the 4th of July 1881. Both dates according to the lunar calendar. Some other versions are first, born in 1808 and died in 1890. Second, born in 1788 and died in 1876, and some others as well. I have asked a lot of people about this information. Unfortunately, none of them have definite proof. As mentioned moments ago, in old China, most people did not keep meticulous records of a person's date of birth, death, and other such necessary information. 
in stark contrast, nowadays China has a very well developed system to track any citizen's information. All the possible accounts considered, it's safe to say that Li Luoneng was active in the martial art community about less than 200 years ago. Li Luoneng was from Shen County, Hebei Province. Shenxian or Shen County is called Shenzhou nowadays, a county level city under the administration of the prefecture level city of Hengshui, Hebei Province. I have been to that area before, and my own impression of that region was the air pollution and the poor water quality. I heard both air and water quality have improved dramatically in the last 10 years. When he was a child, Li Luoneng practiced Hua Quan and Shaolin in his hometown. After more than two decades worth of practice, his Kung Fu practice had reached an advanced level, according to some people in his hometown. Upon hearing about the great practice of the Dai family in Shanxi, he traveled to Shanxi to study Xin Yi with the Dai family. Xin Yi without a G, later on, he created his own practice and started teaching people in Shanxi and Hebei. In his 60s, he moved back to Hebei from Shanxi and officially named the style he created Xing Yi. From then on, Xing Yi became the official name of the style. So, the style Xing Yi was named after he moved back to Hebei. The style he practiced and taught in Shanxi before he moved back to Hebei was called by many different names, including Xing Yi Quan, uh, Liu He Quan, and even Xin Yi Liu He Quan. But nowadays, most people simply call it Xing Yi or Xing Yi Quan in order to differentiate the style created by Li Luoneng from its predecessor style Dai family Xin Yi Liu He Quan. Most of you may be aware of the confusion caused by different names for different styles or the same style using different names. For example, Li Luoneng's Xing Yi with the G was called Xin Yi without the G. In some regions such as Shanxi Province 1, in reality, there were already two different styles back then. I hope this video can clarify this confusion for good. This section was a brief introduction to Li Luoneng, the Xing Yi founder. Now, let's understand Li Luoneng and his work better by talking about the brief history of Xing Yi in terms of creation, development, and technical analysis in the next topic. Topic 2. A Brief History of Xing Yi Creation and Development Before we proceed, let me first mention the name of three distinct styles which I will be using in the rest of this video. The three styles are first, Xin Yi Liu He, second, Dai Family Xin Yi, and third, Xing Yi. As mentioned in prior videos, I will not use the word Quan or Fist since seasoned practitioners in the traditional Chinese martial art community refer to a style without the term Quan. So, let's get used to this naming method going forward. Again, they are first, Xin Yi Liu He, second, Dai family Xin Yi and the third Xing Yi. Now, let's talk about each of the three styles one by one. First, Xin Yi Liu He, a style commonly believed to be created by Ji Ji Ke about 
400 years ago based on your faith training manual. This style is also called Xin Yi Quan or Hard Mind Boxing, Liu He Quan or Sixth Harmony Fixed. So the style Xin Yi Liu He can be called both Xin Yi and Liu He. But for the sake of clarity, I will refer to it as Xin Yi Liu He. Of the three styles, Xin Yi Liu He had had the longest history. There do exist some disagreements about the founder of this style, but those are beyond the scope of today's topic. Second, Dai family Xin Yi, commonly believed to be created by Dai Longbang based on Xin Yi Liu He, the style I just mentioned. By the way, some people also disagree on Dai Longbang being the founder of a Dai family Xin Yi. Dai family Xin Yi is also called Dai family Liu He, basically the term Dai family prepended to Liu He, an alternative term for Xin Yi Liu He, as mentioned earlier. For the sake of clarity, I will call it Dai family Xin Yi. Dai family Xin Yi is the style Li Luoneng learned before creating his own style Xing Yi. Third, Xing Yi, a style created by Li Luoneng based on the Dai family Xin Yi. You may have noticed that in all my video mentioning Li Luoneng, I have always said that Li Luoneng learned from the Dai family without mentioning any specific person's name. You may be wondering why, let me now explain it to you. According to some written documents, some martial artists including Sun Lu Tang claimed that Li Luoneng studied from Dai Longbang. Let's investigate this claim. First, there are two different accounts of Dai Longbang's date of birth and death as recorded in two official county documents edited and maintained by the local governments. The first account mentions Dai Longbang's date of birth and death as 1720 and 1809, respectively, while the second account mentions the date of birth and death as 1713 and 1802, respectively. However, Li Luoneng went to Shanxi to visit the Dai family around 1836, which means that Dai Longbang had passed away decades already. That's why there is no way Li Luoneng could have learned directly from Dai Longbang. Instead, it is more likely that Li Luoneng practiced with Dai Wenxiong, the second son of Dai Longbang. This is a plausible claim and has been getting increasing support recently. So, in order to avoid digressing from the main topic in prior videos, I always said Li Luoneng learned from the Dai family before creating his own style. By the way, Dai Wenxiong was also known by other names, the most popular name being Dai Erlui. <clears throat> now, I have introduced the three important names that indicate three styles. So, it is no wonder sometimes people call Xing Yi by different names since it is very easy to confuse it with the other two styles. Xin Yi Liu He or just Xin Yi, and Dai family Xin Yi Liu He or just Dai family Xin Yi. Even worse, people also confused the Xing Yi technical system with the other two styles. Actually, they are different styles even though they may be called the same name randomly. I believe it was a great idea for Li Luoneng and his Hebei students to call his style Xing Yi after he moved back to his hometown. So, <clears throat> technically speaking, 
，the original 新逆六合 ，die family 新逆六合 ，and 形逆 are three different training seasons. Even though some techniques may have been inherited from prior styles, a little over two decades ago, I started saying that there were only two styles of Xing Yi: Hebei style and Shanxi style, named after their place of birth. Later on, both Shanxi and Hebei styles evolved. Into many sub-styles or branches, such as Li Chunyi Xing Yi of the Hebei branch, Hebei style, Song Shi Rong Xing Yi of the Shanxi style, and so on. Even though those different Xing Yi have been practiced in different cities, provinces, and countries. Now, some people claim Xing Yi Liu He and the Dai family Xing Yi. To be part of Xing Yi, well, Xing Yi Liu He and the Dai family Xing Yi are predecessors of Xing Yi. I do not agree that they are part of Xing Yi. The historical relationship between two styles should not be the main criterion to classify a style. Instead, the main criterion should be the technical analysis. Now, in China. More and more people have begun accepting this classification method to differentiate Xing Yi from its predecessors. After introducing these three important but confusing names, let's go back to the original topic: the brief history of Xing Yi creation and development. Li Luoneng traveled from Hebei. To Shanxi in order to practice Dai family Xing Yi. After ten years of practice, he mastered Dai family Xing Yi and began teaching it and also modify it in the process. Over the next few decades, he systematically modified Dai family Xing Yi into a new style, which is Xing Yi. In his sixties. He moved back to Hebei. His practice evolved further. The structure became more expanded and eventually resulted in the creation of the Hebei style of Xing Yi, different from the one he taught in Shanxi, known today as Shanxi style Xing Yi, which is more compact in structure compared to Hebei style Xing Yi. In his lifetime, Li Luoneng taught many students. Some of them became very famous in their own right. There exist different accounts of Ba Da Di Zi or eight important disciples. However, Che Yijai, Song Shi Rong, Guo Yunshen, Liu Qilan, and Li Taihe, his own son, were always on the list. Together with Li Luoneng, his eight students played a key role in promoting Xing Yi in the Chinese martial art community. The effort toward disseminating and promoting Xing Yi by many generations over a century was one of the reasons behind Xing Yi being one of the most practical and popular styles in China. Now let's talk about Li Luoneng's important contribution to the Chinese martial art community in the next topic. Topic three: Li Luoneng's contribution. As the founder of a popular martial art style, it is very hard to summarize all his contributions to the later generations. I'd like to explain his contributions in terms of the following eight aspects. First, Santi posture as the foundation of a body structure. Compared to Xin Yi Liu He and the Dai family Xin Yi, Li Luoneng created a back-weighted stance or Santi stance instead of the one used in his predecessors. This body structure. Especially the weight distribution can improve the flexibility of the hips and the waist, 
or the lower Dantian area, which is the physical foundation for powerful Fa Li or martial power execution. This body structure makes the Xing Yi focus on the forward and the backward power on the horizontal level, which also ensuring the subtle upward and the downward body movement in practice. Second, five elements as five types of Xing Yi energy practice. Prior to Li Luoneng creating Xing Yi, there was no specific training method for developing these five types of martial energy. Instead, they largely remained a theory. Li Luoneng developed a theoretical concept into practice so that Xing Yi practitioners could follow this method for developing martial power. The separation of martial power and martial technique in martial art training make Xing Yi a practical style in the martial art community. Third, 12 animal form as its martial technique. The predecessor style, Xing Yi, has the well developed martial skill set that is the 10 animal forms. Li Luoneng redesigned the Xin Yi animal practice by basing it on the San Ti poster. He also expanded the Xing Yi animal skill set to 12 animals. It is worth noting that he not only added some new movements and martial techniques, but more importantly, he redesigned the system based on the San Ti poster making the execution of the martial energy much easier and more internal than Xing Yi's predecessors. So, Li Luoneng's Xing Yi 12 animal practice is not merely about new movements. Actually, it is the whole new Shen Fa or body method for application purposes. Fourth, Development of new martial art routines for training purposes. Compared to its predecessor, Xin Yi, Li Luoneng created many new routines in order to enrich the practice content. Xing Yi routines created by Li Luoneng made it possible for, for practitioners to express their own martial understanding through routine practice. Also, a lot of new techniques had been added to different routines if they were not already included in the five elements and the twelve animals. Following Li Luoneng's approach, later generations, especially the third generation, created a lot of new Xing Yi routines, contributing toward the further development of that style. This approach is based on Li Luoneng's style concept, which was set by him in the first place. As a result, Xing Yi has become very rich in terms of practice content. Fifth, two-person form practice was created by Li Luoneng in Xing Yi compared to its predecessor style. In order to accelerate the progress toward mastering that style, Li Luoneng created a new training method, a two-person form routine. This method was very advanced in his time since this method could quickly help its practitioners master basic self-defense skills, especially at a subconscious level. As mentioned before, advanced martial training is to train the martial skill meant to be used subconsciously. This two-person training method created by Li Luoneng made it a lot easier to meet this objective. Six, Xing Yi emphasized the concept of Quan Xie He Yi, or the unity of bare hand training and weapons training. Li Luoneng's Xing Yi training, especially the five element training, 
is largely the imitation of a spear practice. Also, Li Luoneng's Xing Yi emphasizes that weapon training and bare hand training strengthen each other in terms of martial technique and martial power. Xing Yi's weapon training, especially its spear training, can greatly strengthen the martial power of a practitioner, making Xing Yi a style greatly emphasizing the unity of bare hand and weapon practice as one. Seventh, Lian Yang Jie He or unity of martial combat and health maintenance. Xing Yi is a Taoism based system, developed upon Yin Yang and other important Taoist theories. Compared to its predecessors, especially through the Sun Ti stance based practice, Xing Yi can be practiced based on different type of martial power, body strength, and intensity of training. More interestingly, statistically speaking, many Xing Yi practitioners in history enjoyed a longer life compared to those of many other styles, which might be evidence for Xing Yi being a valuable style for longevity and keeping good health. I will make a dedicated video to elaborate on this topic in the future. 8. A style more suitable to be promoted to many people. Before Li Luoneng created Xin Xing Yi, Dai family Xin Yi and Xin Yi Liu He were practiced and taught by a very small group of people. Li Luoneng changed that situation by promoting Xing Yi to many students in many regions of China. The success in widely promoting Xing Yi is partially due to its well-designed system, as mentioned in point 1 to 5 of this section. Xing Yi practice especially follows a natural body structure, making it much easier to master. In other words, in comparison with other styles, Xing Yi produces the most effective outcomes given the same amount of time and energy investment, making it a highly efficient style. While Li Luoneng was open-minded in teaching, the success of Xing Yi occurred more importantly because of Xing Yi's suitability for practice by many people. Again, it is very hard to list all of Li Luoneng's contribution to the community. I have only listed some of his major contributions. I will talk about more of his contributions in the future. Now, let's debunk a couple of important misperceptions in the next topic. Topic 4 Misperceptions of Li Luoneng and Xing Yi In the Chinese martial art community, Li Luoneng received a great deal of honor and respect for his creation of Xing Yi. Even so, there are some major misperceptions about him, which I will debunk today. Misperception 1 Some Dai family Xin Yi practitioners claim Li Luoneng did not get the quote unquote real practice from the Dai family. Well, let's look at reality. Li Luoneng spent about 10 years worth of time practicing with the Dai family, but some people claim that he did not get the real practice from his teacher. I would like to ask you. If someone who studied from the Dai family directly but could not get their real practice, then it must be an insult to the Dai family. Are you claiming that the Dai family was so heartless to not teach a good practice to a person who had dedicated himself to following them for 10 years? Also, if someone did not live in Li Luoneng's time and did not witness the practice of Li Luoneng, 
Then how could someone make such a claim? By the way, this kind of claim has only occurred in recent years. Let us say for less than 20 years. At the same time, Li Luoneng created his own style. It was the style created by Li Luoneng that made not just his own style Xing Yi, but by association, also is the predecessor style Xing Yi, well known in the last century. He added new elements of practice into Dai family Xing Yi, eventually creating a new style that has been more popular due to its efficiency and effectiveness. In other words, Li Luoneng's creation surpassed its predecessor in terms of contents and its core practice. So, to claim Li Luoneng did not get the real practice of the Dai family Xin Yi is just a false claim. Misperception 2 Che Yi Zhai is the co founder of Xin Yi. About 20 years ago, some people in Shanxi began to claim that Che Yi Zhai, a famous student of Li Luoneng, co created Xin Yi. So, Che Yi Zhai should be the co founder of Xin Yi. Well, this is another false claim. You have to know that even Che Yi Zhai himself did not claim this, but recently, some people in that style began making such claims in order to promote Che's practice. The reality is that Che Yi Zhai was involved in assessing Li Luoneng in the creation of some two person forms. Since obviously, Li Luoneng would have needed a partner to design and create two person forms. Assessing Li Luoneng in the creation of two person forms does not change the fact that Che Yi Zhai was a student of Li Luoneng, that Li Luoneng created Xing Yi and passed it down to Che Yi Zhai and other students. Some people also claim that after Li Luoneng left Shanxi, Che Yi Zhai continued to study with the Dai family. Nobody knows for certain if this claim is true. Let's just assume that he continued studying with the Dai family after Li Luoneng moved from Shanxi province back to Hebei province. In that case, what he was learning from the Dai family was the Dai family Xin Yi. Learning from the Dai family just cannot imply he created Xing Yi. Learning Xing Yi from his teacher Li Luoneng and learning Dai family Xin Yi again from the Dai family does not make him a Xing Yi co founder. That's just the basic logic. In the Dai family, there were other people who studied the Dai family Xin Yi. Does it mean they all were also Xing Yi co founders? It does not make any sense. Sometimes, people are only looking for an opportunity to promote themselves by sacrificing others. It is not a modern disease, but a disease with a long history. Long story short, claiming Che Yi Zhai to be the co founder of Xing Yi is just wrong. Of course, there are many more misperceptions existing in the community. Once in a while, some people are so creative that they try to take advantage of a dead person such as Li Luoneng. We just have to be very careful when hearing strange claims without any evidence. I will introduce and debunk more such misperceptions in the future. Now, let's quickly summarize important lessons one can learn from Li Luoneng's life and uh, his contributions. Topic 5. Takeaways and uh, Inspirations <clears throat> Li Luoneng's life story is very inspiring to all Xing Yi practitioners. Understanding his success story and the practice path can help us 
improve our own practice. I will now categorize all the inspirations one can draw from Li Luoneng's life story into three main aspects. Let me explain them one by one. First, constantly looking for a way to improve current practice. Li Luoneng was an accomplished martial artist even before he left his hometown in order to further improve his skill. More importantly, he chose a totally new style compared to the one he practiced for decades. It required not only an open-minded attitude, but also a strong determination toward learning a whole new system. This is not easy even today, but was all the harder back then. Furthermore, after moving back to his hometown in Hebei province in his cities, he further modified the prior practice that he created and taught in Shanxi province which is another evidence of a constant improvement. Second, following a system but not being limited by the system whenever there is scope for improvement. Li Luoneng practiced the Dai family Xin Yi and already well-developed style back then. However, after identifying the possibility to improve it in order to make it more suitable for more practitioners, he innovated upon the Dai family Xin Yi, creating a new style displaying his true creativity. Third, applying a systematic approach to creating a style. When Li Luoneng created Xing Yi, he utilized a systematic approach toward creating its practice contents, improving the core practice of the style, promoting this style to many people, and so on. It would have been simple impossible to create practices like the Sun Ti Stance, the Five Power Training Method, multiple routines, two-person forms, and so on, without a systematic approach. The creation of all those practices is the result of a systematic improvement of an already existing style. I hope this video will give you a brief understanding of Li Luoneng's life and his contributions to the martial art community. Thank you for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.